are officially four. Five by the time that this video comes out, chapters into two blue vortex. And it's become very apparent that many characters over the three year time skip have become much stronger. Of course, there's the obvious characters who have gotten stronger, like Boruto and Kawaki, as Boruto now has his own legendary move, Rasengan Uzuhiko, and can use Flying Raijin, and Kawaki seems to be roughly around the same power level as Boruto with full control over the Daikoku Ten. But we didn't really understand just how powerful Boruto and Kawaki had become until they came face to face with Code, who at one point in the story was the strongest person in the universe by far, and is now no longer that. As Code, without his limiters, mind you, meaning that he is now more powerful than Ishiki, because the reason that Ishiki forced Amado to put limiters on Code in the first place is because Code without limiters could have been stronger than Ishiki, lost to Boruto in literally one punch. That means the gap in strength between Boruto and Code is almost insurmountable. And now, mind you, if Limitless Code is stronger than Ishiki or Jigen, that means that Limitless Code is stronger than Naruto and Sasuke as adults in the peak of their lives. Because Naruto and Sasuke, even though they tried super hard, stood no chance against Jigen slash Ishiki. And it wasn't until Naruto sacrificed Kurama and activated Baryon mode that he was able to even just run the clock out on Ishiki. See, because here's the thing. Baryon mode Naruto was stronger than Ishiki, but only for like three minutes, which means that technically Ishiki was still stronger than Naruto, because if Ishiki didn't have a ticking clock that was very conveniently being shaved down every single time that Naruto punched him, boy oh boy would the world be a fruit. But if Boruto is stronger than Limitless Code, that means that he's way stronger than adult Naruto and adult Sasuke's combined strength, and that is insane to say out loud. And if we're assuming because of the way that stories work that Kawaki is somewhere around that strength, that means that both Boruto and Kawaki respectively are stronger than the combined force of Naruto and Sasuke, which raises the incredibly logical question of, oh, okay, how is anybody else gonna remain relevant in this universe? Which, Good question. See, because technically, Boruto and Kawaki aren't the only people that we've seen take a big step forward in terms of power. But is everybody else's step as big as Boruto and Kawaki's? Well, let's get into it. It's safe to assume in the three-year time skip that age has given Mitsuki a body strong enough for him to maintain perfect sage mode. And considering the fact that Mitsuki appears to have gotten taller and thicker, that's not crazy to assume. Especially when you consider the fact that pre-time skip, he was able to maintain perfect snake sage mode for an okay amount of time, as immediately after being brainwashed, he activated it to try and find Boruto. And thus three more years of training in Sage mode and getting a stronger body as Mitsuki has gone from 12 or 13 to 15 or 16, means that Mitsuki is probably all but wrapped up Perfect Snake Sage mode. And since we've never met a Perfect Snake Sage, we don't really know what the ceiling is for Mitsuki, but it's probably pretty high, especially when you tie in the fact that he may or may not be a descendant of an Otsutsuki. And actually considering the fact that Mitsuki is a clone of Orochimaru, specifically a version of Orochimaru that was made from Kabuto's sales in the beginning of the fourth great shinobi world war which means that mitsuki just like orochimaru should have access to all of taka and the sound village 5's abilities which means he should have things like swagitsu's hydrification technique karin's life force and healing factor shikatsu Yaku. because why wouldn't he? If he's a clone of Orochimaru who has all of these abilities, why wouldn't Mitsuki manifest those abilities? Tie that into the fact that once again, he is a perfect snake sage, and we have a pretty powerful character on our hands. And while we haven't seen Mitsuki in battle yet, we'll probably get there eventually. On top of this, Team 10 has also appeared to get a little bit stronger. As when the Claw Grimes are invading Konoha, Team 10 is able to sweep in with Himawari and battle them back. And while obviously wiping out Claw Grimes isn't a crazy feat, if we assume that these Claw Grimes are at least Jonin level, it's still pretty impressive. Even Himawari, who wasn't a ninja, prior to the time skip came into battle against the Claw Grimes, and a large section of the first chapter was actually dedicated to showing Himawari training to become a ninja. So really when it comes down to it, all of the main or main-ish characters in Boruto have gotten stronger after the time skip. And really when it comes down to it, the only person who we have no visual confirmation as to whether or not they've gotten any stronger is Sarada. But I know what you're gonna say, but Nick, Sarada fought off the Claw Grimes just like Team 10 and Himawari. Well, the bar is a lot higher for Sarada than it is for Inujin, as she was not only probably capable of doing that pre-time skip, but is also a dual MS wielder and somehow immune to Ada's charm. So the real question becomes, how is Sarada gonna remain relevant in the grand power scheme of Boruto? Her path isn't as obvious as Mitsuki or even Himawari, but the path doesn't always have to be obvious to be correct, because today, I'd like to show you that path. More specifically, I'd like to show you how Sarada becomes the wielder of the Yadamir 
in the Totsuka Blade. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard me correctly. I'm hypothesizing that Sarada will gain the Yada Mirror and the Totsuka Blade on her Susana. She will be the inheritor of her uncle's legendary spiritual weapons. And with those weapons, she will remain squarely within the relevant power scheme. But we got a lot to unpack before we get to the end of this winding trail, so please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you like going on meandering obscure paths with me that somehow end in anime theory, you're gonna love my other channel, The Weeb Commander, where instead of talking about Naruto and Borto, I talk all other anime. Or if you're just interested in anime and wanna hear about it from two men that you would trust on a dark obscure path in the middle of nowhere, go ahead and listen to my anime podcast, Otaku's Anonymous, where me and Danny Mata break down everything that happened in anime this week. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And if you wanna dress to impress with that conversation, go ahead and meander on over into my merch store, otakusanonymous.net, where you can pick up some of the greatest anime t-shirts, sweatshirts, and sticker packs known to man. But before we get into all that today, we got to talk about one of our favorite recurring sponsors to the page, Bayi. Bayi is a Japanese auction and shopping service. That sounds kind of complicated. Why would you, somebody watching this video in English, need that? Well, have you ever gone to buy something that's inherently Japanese, like a statue or a figurine or a poster or manga, and realize that it's way more expensive than it should be? Well, that's because a lot of Japanese products that are sold in places that aren't Japan are bought by a middleman. And that middleman, upon buying a product, marks up the price and sells it to you. Bayi allows you to cut out that middleman. You cut out that middleman by bidding directly on Japanese products that that can get shipped directly to your house. But I know what you're thinking. Japanese website probably means the entire website's in Japanese. And you, with a greater likelihood than not, do not read Japanese. But luckily, you don't have to worry about that because not only is Bai incredibly easy to use, it's also available in a plethora of different languages. And you don't have to worry about that package not making it to your house because Bai ships all over the world, like Oceania, Europe, North America, and a ton of other places. And not only do they ship all across the world, they ship using over a dozen different shipping services, meaning that upon checkout, you'll have options. And not only will you have shipping options, but they also accept a myriad of different payment options, allowing you to pay with things like PayPal, Zelle, Alipay. But on top of all of that convenience, Bayi is offering you an incredible campaign today, where when you sign up for Bayi using either the link in my description or the link in my pinned comment, you will get a coupon for 10% off your purchase. On top of that, if you use Mercari, you will get 2,500 yen off your international shipping fee and three coupons that completely nullify Bayi's service service charge. Now these coupons are available for Mercari first time users only and are available between January 12th and January 31st. But these coupons can and should be stacked with that previous 2000 yen coupon, giving you a total of 4,500 yen off your order. So what are you waiting for? Get your office looking like mine and head to Bayi right now. So Sarada, one of the brightest shining moments of the first 80 chapters of Boruto, whether it was her cutting down Boro with the Chidori or awakening MS, she was one of the most important characters in Boruto's first half. And now with the coming of two blue vortex, while she has taken a step back in terms of plot importance, the recent revelations of the first half of Boruto mean there's a definite chance that Sarada will play an integral role throughout the duration of two blue vortex. And the two revelations that might set her up to be one of the more important characters in two blue vortex are the awakening of her dual MS and and the fact that she's immune to Ada's char. However, when it comes to these two factors about Sarada, we don't have much explanation. See, while we understand why Sarada awoke her MS, that's basically all we understand about her MS. We don't know how it works. We don't know how she's gonna be able to use it without going blind. We don't know its abilities. We don't even know if she's tried to train it at all in the last three years. And somewhat surprisingly, we have more of an idea as to why she's immune to Ada's charm than what her MS abilities are. Well, that is to say that we at least have pretty good theories to explain why Sarada would be immune to Ada's charm. Or, I guess I should call it Ada's omnipotence. See, because when it comes down to Sarada being immune to Ada's omnipotence, we really have three possible explanations. Either Sarada is immune to Ada's omnipotence because Sasuke received chakra from Hagoromo, and she, now as Sasuke's daughter, has Hagoromo's chakra running through her blood, which makes her enough of an Otsutsuki to be immune to omnipotence. The other possibility is actually a possibility that we painted out very recently on this page, that claimed that during Kaguya's death, as Sakura was the last person to hit Kaguya before she was sealed and then inevitably died through the Six Bastion Bakuta Tensei that Kaguya decided to place a karma marking on Sakura. And since karma markings are black triangles, she would be able to place this karma marking under Sakura's Byakuya seal. And thus there's a possibility that Sarada's Otsutsification actually comes from her mother. But if you're curious about Sakura possibly being a karmic vessel for Kaguya, go ahead and watch that other video. Now, in an ideal world, these two theories would 
both be correct, and thus Sarada would be otutsified from both sides of her family, which would definitely set her up to be immune to omnipotence. Omnipotence. Honestly, it's like the word aunt. I say omnipotence sometimes, I say omnipotence sometimes. It's aunt, aunt, almond, almond. I never say almond. Who says almond? Now, in the unideal circumstance, Sarada is immune to omnipotence because of a third possible theory, which is that she's unaffected by omnipotence because she has a crush on Boruto, who's an Otsutsuki. Now, unfortunately, when it comes down to these three theories, this theory's got the most data behind it, as there's only two people immune to Ada's omnipotence, and those are Sumire and Sarada, who are both confirmed to have a crush on Boruto. But here's the hoping that it's causation and not correlation. Though, with the way that women are written in the Naruto universe, <laughs> is likely. But you know how many theories we have about what Sarada's MS abilities are or what her Susana will look like that are actually credible? Kind of zero. Like, sure, I can sit here and say to you that because MS abilities in a Susano are a representation of the person when they manifest said ability, that Sarada's MS abilities will be focused on trying to heal people and change their worldview. Since Sarada awoke her MS when she was begging Sasuke to protect Boruto, and thus it's fair to assume that Sarada's MS abilities would be some kind of counter to Ada's brainwash ability. And since Sarada's mother is one of the greatest medical ninja of all time, it's not crazy to assume that one of her MS abilities would have the ability to heal. And thus, when it comes down to her MS abilities, I and a lot of other people subscribe to the idea that one of her MS abilities will have a golden-like Amaterasu flame that will heal those burned by it and burn out the malice from their heart. And this makes sense because Sarada was able to awaken not only her Sharingan, but also her MS through love, and she is the physical representation of the cycle of hatred being broken. However, since Uchiha's are said to be incredibly emotional people, so she'll still hold on to the flames of the Uchiha, because flame release is a big thing in the Uchiha clan. They won't be black and reduce you to ashes, but gold and heal you. With Sarada's other MS ability being the ability to change people's worldview to that of her own, which essentially would turn enemies into allies. It would work like Koro Matsukame, essentially, if the only goal of Koro Matsukame was to change somebody's worldview to your own, which I guess technically was kind of the application that's just we wanted to use it for on Fugaku anyways. And since when it comes down to Uchiha's who have awoken their MS is Sarada's closer to Shisui Nitachi than she is to any other Uchiha in history, it kind of makes sense to assume that her MS abilities would be at least tangentially tied to the two of them. Now, if Sarada were to awaken these two MS abilities, she would be pretty powerful. Though these two MS abilities would kind of slot Sarada into more of a support role, which is not ideal, but it's looking more likely by the day. Because if Sarada does become a support role, then she's just going to be a new generation of strong, punchy healer. And while I do have one of those strong, punchy healers tattooed onto me, I'd prefer something new. The great thing about awakening a dual MS is that you get a lot more than just your MS abilities. You also... Get a Susano, which is good because there's absolutely no way in the current Boruto power scheme that just MS abilities would make you relevant. Sasuke with an EMS and a 6 to May Rinnegan was irrelevant in the power scheme of Boruto. Sure, he got some good blows in against Kinshiki and Momoshiki, but as soon as we took a step up to Ishiki slash Jigen, irrelevant. So no amount of dual MS in the world is going to make you relevant, especially when you haven't cut your teeth on two decades of battling against Otsutsuki level threats. And thus, well, if Sarada does awaken these MS abilities, she would be incredibly useful in the turning of people like Mitsuki and Chikamaru back from enemies into allies. That in healing would kind of be her only uses. And really, when it came down to it, she would be a liability in a battle against the likes of Kawaki, Boruto, Code, or any of the divine trees that are running around right now. The Shinju, the divine trees that were claw grimes that bit people that now call themselves divine trees it's all dumb because just the bug shinju was able to pressure boruto which means that there's a fair chance that every single one of these shinju is relative to boruto who is as it currently stands massively more powerful than sarada and since i'm pretty sure that kishimoto has learned his lesson of turning incredibly cool female characters into plot objects him making sarada a person who plays a pivotal role in the first half of boruto irrelevant power wise wouldn't be the best idea, and also would be slightly out of character with what he did in the later half of Shippuden. Because while Sakura wasn't the most important person in the Fourth Great Shinobi World War, she was banging with the big boys. But the real problem for Sarada is that she's simply gonna be outsped by everybody. In fact, when it comes to all of the main characters in Boruto, it's fair to assume that Sarada will be the slowest. Now, I only say this because Sasuke, with his EMS and Six Tomei Rinnegan, could not keep up with the speed of Ishiki. Whether it was Ishiki shrinking himself and flying around or throwing black rods at Sasuke, Sasuke was pretty powerless to it. And Sasuke, with a higher level of dojutsu and more practical experience, should have a faster reaction time and speed than Sarada. Which which means that Sarada would need defense. As really when it comes down to it, Sarada awakening the EMS just isn't in the cards. Because as I currently see it, Sasuke is going to be healed and brought back probably better than ever after he gets out of 
his tree debacle, which means that Sarada needs to use the abilities she already has to remain relevant. And that relevancy is coming from nowhere else but her Susano. See, we already have some current theories about what Sarada's Susano will look like, except that theory is just that I want it to be pink, but I understand that it probably shouldn't be, because pink is my favorite color, but we cannot give the first ever girl Susano the color pink. I mean, we can, and I would love it, but at the same time, the feminist in me is like, bad. And I think that's kind of where everybody is with Sarada's Susano color. And unfortunately, there's a really good in-universe explanation as to why Sarada's Susano color would be pink. And that's because the more pure of heart you are, the brighter your Susano is. Which is why Kakashi, inarguably the most pure of heart person to ever awaken a Susano, has such a bright colored Susano. Oh, Nick, what about Itachi? He also had a very bright Susano, and so did Shisui. If you believe that Shisui Susano is canon, which at this point, I don't know, why not? But outside of pink, do we have any other theories about what Sarada Susano will look like? Well, if Sarada does want to remain relevant, then that Susano better be pretty powerful. Because Sasuke Susano, one of the most powerful Susanos in existence, was nullified in an instant by Jigen not even Ishiki. And that's what it really comes down to it. Sarada Susano is going to have to pack a level of defense that Sasuke's simply did not have. And where do you find defense in a Susano? Well, look nowhere else than the Yada Mirror. Do we all know that Itachi Susano came with two weapons, the Sword of Totsuka and the Yada Mirror. However, Itachi Susano also had the ability to fire off something known as Magatama. You know, those Tomei looking projectiles that he was able to throw? Madara could also use them. And with these three weapons on a Susano, technically Itachi Susano had all three items of the Imperial Regalia of Japan. That is to say that these are three legendary items that are passed down from Emperor to Emperor. And each one of these three items is meant to represent one of the key parts of being the Emperor. That is to say that they're meant to represent the three foundations of the Japanese populace, which are wisdom, benevolence, and valor. Oh, I'm sorry, I lied. The Sword of Kusanagi is actually the Imperial Regalia. The Sword of Totsuka is the sword that Susano uses to kill the Great White Snake Orochi, which is incredibly relevant when you think about how Itachi killed Orochimaru. But still, Itachi Susano had a legendary sword in two out of the three Imperial Regalia of Japan. And with these three weapons, his Susano, if it was ever completed, would have inarguably been the strongest Susano ever. And it does get completed in the Storm games, but that doesn't really count. However, because Itachi never acquired EMS, which we believe to be the prerequisite to acquire a full body Susano, he was never able to finish his Susano. That didn't stop his incomplete Susano from being an absolute menace, as the Yadamir has the ability to reflect all physical and spiritual attacks, meaning any Taijutsu, Genjutsu, or Ninjutsu used against the Yadamir can be reflected back at the user. And when you consider the fact that Susano is already considered to be the perfect defensive move, adding a shield to it that's able to reflect any kind of attack, it's kind of broken. And then outside of this, obviously, Tachi had the Sword of Totsuka, which allowed him to instantly seal anybody he either cut or pierced with his sword into a realm known as the Realm of Drunken Dreams, which existed in the sake bottle that he would sheathe his blade into. Now, we know that Itachi manifested these two weapons because of who Itachi is, as Itachi was a pacifist who needed to end fights quickly, as he didn't have enough physical health or chakra to keep his Susano manifested for very long. And thus, because he was a pacifist, he took no pleasure in battling against people, and two, because he needed to end fights quickly, he manifested a one-hit kill sword. Now, on the other hand, his Yadamir was manifested because Itachi's main goal in life was to protect those closest to him, i.e. Sasuke and Konoha. And thus, as a protector, he manifested a shield that could block anything. But what's interesting specifically about Itachi's Totsuka Blade was that it was kind of a mystery. See, here's the thing. Orochimaru had been looking for the Blade of Totsuka for years, if not decades. As well, Orochimaru was the wielder of the Blade of Kusanagi, something said to be able to cut anything, Orochimaru was always chasing after the strongest things on Earth. And Orochimaru believed that the only thing stronger than his blade of Kusanagi was the Totsuka blade. However, Orochimaru didn't realize until it was substantially too late that the Totsuka blade wasn't really a blade at all, but rather a spirit weapon manifested through Itachi Susano. But what's weird about this is that Orochimaru was on their path to try and find the Totsuka blade long before they knew that Itachi had it. And in fact, it's safe to assume that anybody who ever saw that Itachi had the Totsuka Blade probably didn't live to tell the story. In fact, one could probably extrapolate that Orochimaru was looking for the Totsuka Blade long before Itachi even had it, as Orochimaru abandons Konoha a mere couple of months, if not years, after Minato was elected the fourth Okage. And since Orochimaru, from the jump and even before he abandoned Konoha, was in the pursuit of all knowledge, it's safe to assume that by the time he abandoned the village, the Totsuka Blade was in his sights. But Orochimaru abandoned the village 
around the time of Naruto and Sasuke's birth, which means that Itachi wouldn't get his MS, let alone his Susano, for at least six to seven years. Or how old was Sasuke when the massacre happened? Like four or five? Still, there's a pretty substantial amount of time between Orochimaru leaving the village and the massacre. And while obviously Itachi doesn't awaken his MS on the night of the massacre, he awakens his MS when he kills Shisui, there's still a good chunk of time there, which means that Orochimaru's knowledge of the Totsuka Blade probably isn't tied to Itachi Susano, which means that Itachi Susano is probably not the first manifestation of the Totsuka Blade, as Orochimaru had to be aware that it existed, but also didn't know enough about it to know that it was a Susano-bound weapon, which means more likely than not, the Yadamir and the Totsuka Blade have manifested in Susano's previous to that of Itachi's, though more likely than not, they're incredibly rare. And since, like we've already stated, aspects of Susano manifest based on the personality of the person manifesting them, it's safe to assume throughout the generations, the Uchiha who managed to manifest the Susano that were either the most protective or the most pacifistic would manifest the Totsuka Blade or the Yadamir. Since a lot of the Uchiha throughout the 2000 years of war against the Senju weren't all that pacifistic or all that focused on protecting those around them, you could understand how these two legendary weapons became pretty rare. But there is the distinct possibility because cycles are so important and so common in Naruto that these spiritual weapons actually cycle through the generations. That is to say that the Uchiha who's deemed to be the most pacifistic or the most focused on protecting those around them manifest these weapons. And thus every single generation of Uchiha, assuming somebody in that generation awakens NMS, gets these weapons. But since the secrets of the Uchiha are tightly kept, this kind of information never leaked out to Orochimaru. And thus this would explain why Itachi was granted such legendary Susanoo weapons when nobody else was, as these weapons are simply once in a generation. And since the Magatama and the Yadamir are Imperial Regalia of Japan, and since there's only one set of Imperial Regalia of Japan, which is passed down from Emperor to Emperor like a cycle, there more than definitely is not ever two people simultaneously who can use the same technique. But all of these weapons don't necessarily have to be a package deal. You see, Madara is also able to wield the Magatama, but Madara dies roughly around Sasuke's birth, which means that Madara dies roughly around when Itachi was five, which means that Shisui is somewhere around eight to nine when Madara dies. Now, since Shisui was the youngest ever person to manifest his MS, manifesting his MS at seven years old, this means that Shisui manifested his MS before Madara's death, and thus the first person to awaken a dual MS after Madara's death was Itachi. And thus it's a distinct possibility that the Magatama were passed from Madara to Itachi. Now we know for a fact that Madara didn't have the Yadamir or the Totsuka Blade, which is why I'm subscribing to the theory that different weapons can be passed down between different people depending on what character attributes apply to said person. It just so happens that when Itachi manifested his Susano, he had the proper amount of emotions to apply himself to three different weapons. Magatama, the Mirror, and the Blade. But I know what you're saying. Nick, if it's a cycle and you have to wait for the last person who has all these weapons to die, why didn't Sasuke get the weapons? Sasuke awoke his MS by killing Itachi. Itachi, and therefore it would make sense that now that Itachi is dead, Sasuke should inherit his weapons, as the cycle needs to continue, right? No, not right. We literally just talked about how your emotional state has to match the values of the Imperial Regalia you would be receiving, and how in any way is heavy Sasuke living by the virtues of valor, wisdom, and benevolence. You know who does live by those virtues? Sasuke's daughter, Sarada, who is almost a one-to-one -one copy of Itachi. What do I mean? She's a character split between two worlds. That is Boruto and Konoha, because she's aware of the objective truth of both sides. Kind of like how Itachi was aware of the objective truths of both Konoha and the Uchiha. She has dreams bigger than herself, as almost the entirety of her character is dedicated to protecting those around her. For Itachi, it was Sasuke. For Sarada, it's Boruto. But even though Sarada and Itachi are singularly focused on protecting one person, they're also focused on protecting Konoha as a whole, even if it means painting themselves as the villain or ostracizing themselves. Kind of like how Sarada has ostracized herself from everybody not named Sumire by going on and on and on to everybody who's been brainwashed that Boruto isn't actually evil. Not to mention that now that Sarada has made contact with Boruto, she probably acts as a spy for Boruto and Kashin Koji for all of the going ons of Konoha and Kawaki. Kind of like how Itachi was a spy against the Uchiha. And thus it would make sense of the two people who have manifested an MS since Itachi's death that Sarada would be the inheritor of his legendary spiritual weapons. And while technically any Susano, regardless of the weapons they're wielding, is considered ninjutsu, and therefore is weak against things like karma markings and Rinnegan palms because they can absorb ninjutsu, it's a possibility that the Yadamir, with its ability to block any spiritual or physical attack, will be able to block even absorption type abilities. Not to mention that Sarada wielding the Totsuka Blade would immediately make her relevant in the power scheme of Boruto. Because when it comes down to her speed amongst the top ranks of Boruto, she would definitely be lacking, having 
having a one-hit weapon that's able to seal anybody that comes into contact with it would definitely be a big edge for her. And since Pocket Dimensions just got cool again in Boruto with the Daikoku Ten, Sarada having a pocket dimension of her own, the Realm of Drunken Dreams, would make a lot of sense narratively. And since there's already been plenty of lines drawn between Itachi and Sarada down to the way that they dress, genuinely is not the craziest way to keep Sarada relevant in Boruto's power scheme. But what do you guys think? Do you believe that Sarada has a possibility of manifesting Itachi's weapons? Tell me in the comments below. And while you guys are down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Does Nick just want more opportunities to talk about the Totsuka Blade? Maybe.